There is good coming from the current state of isolation. Susan Elizabeth Littlefield shows us why one expert says this is a rebirth of person to person communication. It was supposed to be a well timed getaway for this Alabamian turned Minnesotan. I'm 1,100 miles from my family, and um, I only get to see them three or four times a year, and hadn't seen them since Christmas. So, uh, you know, I, w I was looking forward to going to see them. COVID 19 canceled the trip, but not the family fun. For the first time, her family set up a Zoom session. I got uh, my two sisters and then my mom and dad on the line, uh, and we just sat for an hour and we just talked and cracked jokes. Chris says she was surprised how authentic the experience was. My nephew, who likes to annoy everybody in real time, is back there aggravating his mom in the background doing things, and you're like, okay, that's just like normal. Psychiatrist Cheryl Bemmel says video conferencing is good for mental health. Your community coming together, um, you all being able to kind of look in each other's mirrors by seeing each other's faces, it activates our endorphins, it brings on the serotonin, and it brings on the joy. And so that's absolutely wonderful. Dr. Bemmel says when you talk to someone on the phone, you don't have the same connection as when you see their face and their expressions. She says families who live together are also growing in communication, sharing dinner and deeper conversations. As difficult as this time is, it, it may be kind of a, a renaissance of deeper interactions as we're having to pare down. So in some ways, social distancing is bringing people closer. Oh yeah, we've already got plans to, to do it this weekend. So Dr. Bemmel suggests that families talk about heavy subjects like end of life care or health wishes. She says her biggest hope is that after this experience, families will continue to regularly have real in the moment conversations.